I will be talking about my current environment for web development. Uh, I will be talking about what text editor I'm using and what terminal and what shell I'm using. Um, because I experienced in, in, many, in many talks after the meetups uh, that people are constantly discussing what they are using and what would be good and the advantages and disadvantages of all the text editors. So I just quickly going to show you my setup and afterwards we can have a collective discussion about what you are using and what's best. So I'm using Visual Studio Code and iTerm. Uh, you can see here is Visual Studio Code and here is iTerm. Uh, how many of you are using Visual Studio Code? Okay, that's a lot. Um, yeah, so I, I tried many, many text editors. I tried Atom, Visual Studio, WebStorm, uh, Brackets, and ultimately I ended up with Visual Studio Code. Um, yes, I was really amazed when I was using Visual Studio that there is a thing like IntelliSense, and for C Sharp development you have to use basically Visual Studio, and so I tried Visual Studio Code, and I'm happy ever since. And I'm also going to talk about iTerm, the terminal I use, because the basic terminal is bash, I think, or it's called terminal, something like this. However, um, I, I will not spend much time here because I'm not using it that, that often. And also, Visual Studio co Code comes with a terminal on its own. Um, yes, I think that's it. Uh, another important information is that I'm using a Mac, MacBook Pro. And yeah, so the first thing I want to talk about is Visual Studio Code. And the features are, are displayed here. Uh, if you click on the link here, you should go to the home page, which is not displayed, doesn't matter. Um, we'll just copy it. Or we'll even, I will even, yeah, we'll even just open it here and show you. This should work right now, yeah, awesome. So as I'm working on here, I'm going for Visual Studio Code. No, that's not so great here. And here are the main features displayed. First of all, it has, uh, it has IntelliSense, which is practically uh, just syntax highlighting and also autocomplete. I was very amazed when I encountered this uh, feature. It basically allows you to suggest you the methods of objects or functions, whatever. And I will afterwards show a short showcase on how to use it, and then it will be clear and much easier to understand. Um, there's also debugging involved in the Visual Studio Code. So you don't need to debug in Chrome or whatever browser you're using. Um, you have also uh, built-in Git comments, and it's ultimately easy to extend. Uh, extend. Uh, but I think nowadays most of the editors are easy to extend. I also created, uh, or I even wrote an article about, hmm, about the Visual Studio Code extensions I'm using. And this is actually the article has reached pretty much good success. Um, I've just listed all my extensions I'm using. I'm using extensions for HTML, like auto close tag, rename tag, HTML snippets, markdown extensions, of course, JavaScript extensions. Um, this is very important, debugger for Chrome. So you can easily start debugging without a lot of configuration. Maybe I can show you that as well. Um, of course, ESLint, linting, checking your code. Um, yes, in modules, IntelliSense. So if you're, if you're interested, just go to the article and check out the extensions. They are pretty nice for developing. Yes, that's the article about extensions. And the next thing I want to show you is iTerm. Uh, uh, is anyone using iTerm? Okay, one, awesome. Um, then just a short and quick introduction to iTerm, just give you an overview. Just 
just typing in iTerm and it should be the first one. It's a terminal especially for Mac OS. And if I go to features, you can see what, what you can do with, with iTerm. You can split panes, you have hotkey windows, um, you can search for stuff, you can autocomplete. And yeah, so different features that make, makes the use of, of a terminal very easy and efficient. Um, I never really used, used the integrated terminal of, of Mac OS. Uh, I started using item right away because I was recommended to use it and I was always happy. <laughs> yes, so that's the iTerm part. And if I go through the um, presentation, I'm also using it with I think I will just put it in here because that's too complicated otherwise. Um, I also combine it with the Z-Shell. Is anyone else using the Z-Shell? One? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I use it with the Omaizish or however it's called. It has some nice uh, themes and, and features. And also using the auto suggestions, which I show you in, in practice as well. There's also a good article, and I will sh show the slides afterwards, so you can check that out as well. Um, since my setup here is a little bit uh, weird, uh, I will go right away to the demonstration part. Created a nice, a nice slide here. Yes. So now I'm, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm using both Visual Studio Code and the iTerm. Um, just figuring out how to use it properly here. I think the best thing is to just put it in there and looking on top. So maybe another nice feature is to use Spectacle. Is someone using that for Mac OS? It's just that you can switch with your window. It comes by default on most Linux distributions. <laughs> Probably, yeah, it comes on default by, yeah. But Mac doesn't have, has, have something like this. So Spectacle on top, the, uh, the, the glasses is a nice tool and that's for free and it's working great. So as you can see here, um, I can't really stand on the side. Yeah. As you can see here, is, that's the terminal. I have used, uh, used a nice team with coloring and showing the Git status. And I'm currently at the Developers Rising repository because I want to demonstrate how to add stuff to the homepage. So what I can do next at first, or what I want to show you first with Omasish and, and the Z shell in general is to show you the allies. Allies? Yeah. That comes out of the box. And they are a lot, especially a lot, a lot with Git. And that's very useful. This can be very useful, as you can see here. And for example, if I want to do something, I can git status, which is just gist. And it shows me my current status of git. So what's also very nice and works well with Visual Studio Code is now when I'm typing, or maybe let's have it like this. If I'm typing, yeah, probably. So, so if I'm typing code dot, there is, I've installed it in the path. I can just open Visual Studio Code. And now it opens, of course, in my other window, but here it is. And here I'm having the terminal on my side. So I can always work with the terminal here on this side and can work with the editor on this side. So what I wanted to demonstrate now is just to see how Visual Studio Code works. You have options here to show you the folders and files. Um, you have a search. You have an own section for your Git stuff. Um, you have a debugger mode and the extensions listed. And it's also very easy to install, uh, install uh, extensions. You can just add them here and yeah, activate them, install them, uninstall them, etc. Uh, what's interesting is also maybe also a little bit bigger here. Um, no, is it better? No. Yeah. Um, you also have a console here. You have a debug console. You have a terminal, and depending on what shell you have installed, you can also use the commands here. You see, just work working fine. 
And it's also, if you have a linter or something else installed, it displays all the problems and stuff that is not working. So what I did here is, as you know, we have a home page for, we, uh, for developers rising. And I just added our new partner, that is we accelerate. Um, if I just and search, everything is working easily. We accelerate. You can see I just put in a div here, a div class. This section here. And now it, one of the benefits with Visual Studio Code is if you can, you can simply click on the tab here, just show me the working tree here and show me the difference. And it's side by side showing you what you have added or changed and it, it's working perfectly. On the, side, on the side here, you even have a mark where the change in your file is. So if you're, if you're having a large file with 1,000 lines, um, then this really helps. And in this case, I quickly can see, OK, I have here added a diff. So now what I'm going to do is I use the terminal. And I'm, most of the time, I'm using the, the terminal, terminal to use git stuff because it's just faster. So once again, I use the check uh, git status to check what I've, what I've done. Now I say, OK. I'm using also Elias here and said, OK, I'm using a git commit with a message. And I say, just add new uh, partner. Partner, we accelerate. Accelerate, is this typed correctly? Yeah. Um, or maybe with a double D. Can also use it like, oh, holy shit, what's that? <laughs> ah, but So now that, it says, uh, still something missing. OK, I have a logo. So just git add all. Very easy. Just, and then I can, ah, uh, what I also want to show you is the autocomplete. I just go in with that. And it shows me the last, the last uh, commit I did with, with a type of message like this. this. So I use, I just say add. Yeah, a new partner's logo. Awesome. What? You just gave the code. Ah, I don't want to do that. Remove. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not working. What I'm doing now is just uh, pressing Control C to get out of this. Whatever it that was, I have no idea. Um, so I'm trying it again. Still, just auto completing it. Yeah. What? Three, uh... Now it's working, right? No. 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 Ah, true. True, true, true. Awesome. Now it's working. <laughs> and now instead of git push, I set the upstream already, so just gp, and now it pushes to the master branch. And that's pretty easy. What I also want to show you is now this one resolves. So it, it, it's connected and, and knows that there, is, there, there are no changes. And what I want to do, do or show you as well is to go to the help section. And if you haven't worked with Visual Studio Code, you can easily just download it, install it, and then you can go to the hmm, interactive playground. That is what I wanted to show you. Um, and here, actually, I think this is amazing, and I haven't seen this anywhere else. Um, it has an interactive playground where you can try to use the features. So here is an interactive playground. You can see the numbers here. And you can simply do some. As it is explained here, you can combine different keys and, for example, add multiple cursors and then write different stuff. Awesome. But you can also, maybe, if I want to just switch lines or, co uh, or mul multiple, multiply lines, I can also do that very easily. I can switch them around. That's very easy. What I also can do is, I'm not quite sure if I've installed this. Yeah, just on the line going down and adding, I don't know, what is this here? Oh, I have no idea. Maybe I can add another comment. Hi. That's it. Awesome. And I can also delete it. Cool. So that's a great feature, and it just goes through the stuff here. Uh, what I want to show you is actually the IntelliSense, which is amazing. Uh, here is a basic Express example. And what IntelliSense allows you to do 
is if you type app now and then dot, then it should suggest you things, which it doesn't. Uh, I'm not, I, it does, but this is not optimized because that's the playground. Doesn't matter, it, it does what it should do. Um, it just suggests you features and methods. Uh, that's not working uh, really in the playground. Maybe I'm using it more on top. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's working like it should here. Doesn't matter. You can try it on your own, and it hopefully will uh, work. Um, yeah, line action, I'm talking about that. Refactoring. So there is plenty of other stuff on how to speed up your coding. And I think it's pretty good, especially if you're starting with the free CodeCamp curriculum. You have the box where you write your code inside. And at the beginning, it is OK. But when you later have to write longer code, I think it's more and more important to have a good editor with syntax highlighting and also suggestions. Um, and what I've used in the curriculum when I was more advanced and working from the advanced algorithms, I was always writing the, the stuff in, in, inside the text editor, like uh, Atom or Visual Studio Code. And I think it's just easier to work with it, test it, and see if you're working the algorithm the right way instead of using the field on the home page. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think those are the most important things I just wanted to go through. Since the setup is really weird here for me, I'm not going to demonstrate more. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, I have an uh, introduction. Or maybe I can close. Somewhere is the presentation. Yes, here's the background credit <laughs> for Samuel Zeller from Unsplash. Um, yeah, just about me a little bit. Um, I'm co-organizing this meetup with Rob, with Robert. And I'm a business law student. Uh, I'm working as a front-end developer currently. And I'm focusing on machine learning. And I also did, uh, if anyone is interested in machine learning, I also did, uh, where is that? Or I even, ha uh, even wrote an article, actually. If I find it, that would be nice. Yeah, it's here. So if you, if you are, whoa. If you're trying to get into machine learning, there's a great course online. It's from Coursera. Coursera is also an online learning platform. It has very, it has a lot of different courses. Um, I think also on CSS and JavaScript and stuff like that. But I did the machine learning course. And I also wrote uh, tips and tricks on how to do it. I think it takes three months or something. And it's just amazing. So I can also recommend to check um, especially this course, because the teacher is amazing, um, but also the platform Coursera. It's amazing. Um, yes, this was my setup. And now we can discuss your setups. Or if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Thank you very much.